The average American will spend roughly $320,000 on commuting to work over their careers. And considering that over 76% of the US population drives alone to work, I think I'm justified in saying that's a lot of cash. With the ever increasing cost of living and unpredictable gas prices, people are looking for ways to stop spending so much goddamn money on their commutes. And the answer I have for at least some of you is the e-scooter. My name is Nick and I advocate for the cessation of micro shaming, subscribe for regular content. And today I want to take a look at how much you can actually save by switching to an e-scooter. And for this video, I will make the comparison using the weighted average vehicle from AAA unless otherwise stated. And for the scooter, I have chosen the light heavyweight Cabo Mantis King. It's a scooter with a tested range of 36.6 miles and two 1100 watt motors. The scenario, 5,000 miles a year, which is equivalent to a year's worth of 20-ish mile round-trip commuting. And to start off, let's look at the obvious, gas. Who likes the feeling of having an empty gas tank? Literally nobody. And to be honest, I don't like the feeling of having a low battery on my scooter either, but at least I don't have to spend $80 to fill it back up. Using the data from AAA's 2022 driving costs, the average car will cost you $3.75 a day, $899.50 a year, which over the course of five years will be $4,497.50. And in comparison, the Cabo Mantis King will consume just 15 cents a day, $36 a year, and $180 over five years. That's right, the scooter energy costs less than 5% of your average car, and even when compared to the small sedan, the least expensive category, the scooter wins by a wide margin, costing just 6%. And that difference is like, uh, you know the saying, what's the difference between a million and a billion? About a billion. It kind of feels like that. So now you know what to say when someone asks you what the difference in energy cost of a car and a scooter are. About as much as it costs to fuel a car. Of course, fuel is not the only expense for either of these modes, no. So let's take it a step further. Using the same 5,000 miles a year, let's look at how much the entire expense is. We already have those calculations for the car. So for the scooter, I borrowed calculations from my previous video on how much a scooter costs. It includes accessories, tires, tools, and I inflated the price of the scooter, maintenance, battery, and brakes. And that totals $4,430. Amortized over the course of five years, that is an annual cost of $886. The car, on the other hand, will cost you $5,246.50 for one year and a total of $26,232.50 for five. And this gives us a much more realistic comparison. But the scooter still only costs a sixth or 17% of the car. Immense savings. And if the option of ditching the car completely is feasible for anyone out there, do that. Because even throwing in some car rentals a few times a year, you'll still have plenty left over to give yourself a nice vacation. However, I know that's not going to be feasible for everyone because Americans drive a lot more than 5,000 miles a year, almost three times as much. And to be honest, I suspect there are very few people who would actually want to ride 15,000 miles on an e-scooter. It's just not practical or really possible for every trip. And even if it were, I don't think I would want to do that. So what about using it to replace some of your miles? And since we already have calculations for 5,000 miles, let's use that. Let's compare two scenarios. One, a car being driven 15,000 miles a year, and two, a car being driven 10,000 miles plus a scooter ridden 5,000 miles. Starting with only the car, one year comes in at $10,729 or 53,645 over five years. Adding a scooter to the family will bring the one year cost down to $8,516 and 42,580 for five years, a savings of over 20%. It's not earth shattering, but hey, that's over $2,000 in just one year, which is enough to take another decent vacation or buy another scooter for a household with two cars. And that's where the money is. If you have a family with two drivers, ditching one of those cars for two scooters will save you 27%. And in this case, that is over $5,700 a year. You could buy new scooters every year and still be ahead. But this is the average. What about those who are more frugal to begin with? Well, even the cheapest category, there are savings to be had. In our single car scenario, supplementing the small sedan with a scooter will save you 15%, a total of $1,269 a year. 
But on the other hand, America's favorite car is the Ford F-150. So supplementing that with a scooter will save you 24%, a total of $3,080 a year. And if you're one of those crazy families who really love their pickup trucks with two in the garage, I, I really don't expect these folks to switch, but this is just for fun at this point. Getting rid of one truck for two scooters can save you almost $7,000 a year. And it's not just gas cars. You may have noticed the category adjacent to the average in AAA's driving cost calculations, EVs. We live in a world that is increasingly moving towards electric cars. So are there any savings to be had? Spoiler alert, yes, you can save some money driving your EV less. Though, because it doesn't use gas, the energy costs are much lower per mile and in turn give us the least savings when supplementing at just 10% saved, which is $921 a year. These examples are just that, examples. There are so many variables to account for in your own particular case, electricity prices, gas prices, typical commute distances, or the way you shop for cars. You can get a great deal on a small car and savings from an e-scooter would be reduced. However, the Cabo Mantis King is a lot of scooter. In fact, it's more scooter than I would buy. You can get a used 9bot Max with only 100 miles on it for $400. It's, that's a crazy deal. And there are ways to mix it up. You don't have to ride for an entire journey. For example, if you work in a city center with expensive parking, load an inexpensive lightweight e-scooter in your trunk, park where you don't have to pay out of pocket for parking and scoot the last mile or two. And it can even replace your taxi trips. A friend of mine who recently got an e-scooter was blown away by how much money he was saving by replacing Uber trips with his scooter. It doesn't even have to be a scooter. I use and talk about scooters because it just happens to be the most convenient for me. I would actually prefer an e-bike, which is a great option along with EUCs, one wheels, electric skateboards, whatever. The point is, Using a scooter or PV to offset just 30% of your car miles can absolutely save you money and you can save much more by replacing your car entirely. While riding a scooter 20 miles a day may not be for everyone, there are so many ways you can supplement your journeys with a tailored ride that can save you money and actually give you a commute worth looking forward to. So with that, my name is Nick. Thanks for watching.